Hey Rayleigh and anybody else watching and welcome back to another message from your father. So you are free reign today so we will see you may come in with toys you may come come in hitting things we will find out. Uh, anyway looking at 2 Timothy and we just have the four chapters today so chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4. Yesterday uh, we looked at 1 Timothy and the warning against false teachers. We looked at Christ's grace to Paul uh, we saw instructions to Timothy. Uh, we saw Timothy on worship, uh, or instructions to Timothy on worship. Uh, we saw uh, overseers and deacons, uh, advice about widows, elders, and slaves. Uh, finally, the warning against love of money, Rayleigh against love of money, uh, and then also Paul's charge to Timothy. So today we're going to be looking at the encouragement to the faithful, uh, or to be faithful, excuse me, being a workman approved by God, and then the last day's godlessness. We'll also see another charge to Timothy and then some final remarks and greetings. But the thing that we're going to be paying attention to is that last day's godliness. We'll talk, or godlessness. We'll talk about that briefly too. So again, 2 Timothy 1 through 4. So chapter 1, just a minute, sweetie. Chapter 1. <clears throat> Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve, as my forefathers did, with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers, recalling your tears. I long to see you, so that I may be filled with joy. I've been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded, now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan the flame of gift of the gift of God, which is in you, though you through the laying of hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord, or ashamed of me, his, or ashamed of me, his prisoner. But join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. The grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Lord Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I'm suffering as I am. Yet I am not ashamed, because I know whom I have believed, and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. What you have learned from me, keep as pattern of sound teaching, with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. You know that everyone in the province of Asia has deserted me, including Pelagius and Hermogenes. May the Lord show mercy to the household of Anisiphorus, because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. On the contrary, when he was in Rome, he searched hard for me until he found me. May the Lord grant that he will find mercy from the Lord on that day. You know very well how many ways he helped me in Ephesus. Chapter 2. You then, my son, being strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable men who are also qualified to be teachers, or to, excuse me, to teach others. Endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one suffering as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. Similarly, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel, for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Here's a trustworthy saying. If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will disown us. If we are faithless, he will remain faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Excuse me. Keep reminding them of these things. Warn them before God against quarreling about words. It is of no value, and it only ruins those who listen. 
<clears throat> do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Avoid godless chatter because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Their teaching will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hermanius and Philetus, who have wandered away from the truth. They say that the resurrection has already taken place, and they destroy the faith of some. Nevertheless, God's sullen foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription, The Lord knows those who are his. And everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. In a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for noble purposes and some for ignoble. If a man cleanses himself from the latter, he, <laughs> he will be an instrument for noble purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. Flee from the evil desires of youth and pursue righteous, righteousness, love, faith, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Do not have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments, because you know that they produce quarrels, and the Lord's servant must not quarrel. Instead, he must be kind to everyone, able to, re able to teach, not resentful. Those who oppose him, he must gently instruct, in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of truth, and that they will come to their senses and escape the trap of the devil, who has taken them captive to do his will. Chapter 3 but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, having have nothing to do with them. They are the kind who warm their way into homes and gain control over the weak-willed women, who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning, but never able to acknowledge the truth. Just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so also the men who oppose the truth, men of depraved minds, who, as far as the faith are concerned, are rejected. But they will not get very far, because as is in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone you, however, know about all my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, perse persecutions, sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, the persecutions I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil men and impostors will go from bad to worst, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and become convinced of or became convinced of because you know that those from whom you learned it and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus all scripture is god breathed and is useful for teaching rebuking correcting and training in righteousness so that the man of god may be thoroughly equipped for every good work chapter 4. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say, what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn aside their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering. And the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now, there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not, not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Do your best to come to me quickly, for Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, because he is helpful to me in my ministry. 
I sent Tychus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas and my scrolls, especially the parchments. Alexander, the metal worker, did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him for what he has done. You too should be on your guard against him, because he strongly opposed our message. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet Priscilla and Aquila at the house, household of Anisiphorus. I'm sure I'm butchering that. Uh, Erastus stayed in Corinth, and I left Trophimus sick in Miletus. Do your best to get here before winter. Ubalus greets you, and so do Prudence, Linus, Linus, Claudia, and all the brothers. The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you. So there's a couple things here, really, that I want you to pay attention to and that that I hold as a prayer for you today. Number one, that you don't take some of Scripture um, at face value and not other areas of Scripture at face value. I want you to recognize that in 2 Timothy 3, 16, all Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man or woman of God may work thir may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. That's one of my prayers for you. And my other one, uh, 3, 1 through 7. 3, 1 through 7 is talking about the last days. And I think about this often for you because as I, even I look around the room right now, you are amazed at a giant tower of blocks that you're looking at. And it's so innocent and such a cool picture. But outside these doors, it looks considerably different. I mean, it looks a lot different. And unfortunately, it looks like Mark, or excuse me, 2 Timothy chapter 3. And so <laughs> I'll read that again. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, uh, <laughs> ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with them. My prayer for you really is that you recognize that, that even as you are impressed and having fun with your toys right now, that that is something that you recognize that the world is not quite so kind as this place. And unfortunately, what's being described in Second Timothy is what's out there right now. And it's my duty and your mom's duty to equip you well so that you are able to run that race with all fervor. Anyway, know that I love you and I'm praying that for you. And for anyone else watching, as always, know that I appreciate you so much. And I will plan on seeing you tomorrow. Have a good one.